Welcome everybody, I am Alexander Linz, head of content of WatchAdvisor.com and I am welcoming you today from the headquarters of Jacques Hedro in Switzerland, in Jura, in the Jura Mountains. We are located in between the village of Le Locle and the city of La chaux de where the headquarters of Jacques Hedro are. And the next watch I am going to present you is a new edition into the Grand Second collection of Jacques Hedro and it is called Grand Second Dual Time 2. I had to look again on the sheet because there is a 2 and there is of course an existing version 1 we have already presented to you. I just thought about it. So this will be the GMT or the Grand Second Dual Time number 2 right away now for you. So these are the four new uh, Grand Second Dual Time World Map watches of uh, Jacques Hedro. There are four executions uh, offered uh, in uh, red gold with an enamel dial, another red gold version with a Grand Feu, of course, this is also Grand Feu, Grand Feu black enamel dial, and then there is a steel version with a sunblasted dial, and there's a steel version with a black onyx dial. So four versions are available, either 18 karat uh, red gold or steel, always the same watches doing the same things, showing you a second zone time through the mechanism or through the subdial. I will no, now go into detail. And Jacques Hedro belongs to the Swatch Group and Swatch Group stands for no bullshitting and uh, I do say this uh, with uh, uh, purpose because uh, when I see uh, those watches or I get to see such watches, uh, GMT, dual time, you know, people present watches and they don't function as they should function and I always insist explaining you guys out there that a GMT watch, UTC watch, dual time, second time, so whatever you may call the watch has to function properly. And uh, we are, as I told you, at Swatch Group and there is no gimmicks at Swatch Group, so there's real watches and watches that function. So, what you have is the time indication here, it's a normal clock, uh, a subdial, giving you 12 o'clock. And I have already synchronized the uh, second time zone indication you see down there with a world map. It is including a world map and it's separated, of course, in day and night night and day, the correct way, and as you see it's uh, 12 and 22 minutes, noon here in uh, Le Locle, uh, the headquarters of Jacques Hedro, and of course the little arrow points to 12 o'clock and something. And now let's imagine that we are traveling to uh, New York, it's very easy, there is uh, in both uh, countries daylight saving time, so here uh, in Europe and also in the States, so this is a difference of six hours. And what will happen, you arrive in New York and the only thing you have to do, you pull out the crown in the first position and you will see already that you can move, and this is the intelligent thing of the watch, you can move the hour hand in one hour steps. And I am in the position of adjusting the watch and you see the second hand did not stop. The minutes are still indicated correctly. So what you will do, I will go back to 12 and 23 minutes. We're arriving in New York, six hours of difference. So we go back one, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. You push, you close the crown. New York time is 6, 22 or 23 and the time where we have started off, that's the local time here, Central European summer time, is indicating still the red arrow, it is 12 o'clock, it's in between 12 and 1300. So you have your reference, home time, easily readable from the subtitle with the world map, and here you have the new local time. And of course, since it is a really intelligent watch, if we would go over the time, over the day, um, so also the date indication that is here. You have a date indication, it is now pointing at the uh, 14th, 15, 14th, the little arrow of the date. So if we would change from one zone time to another zone time where we would get a time and date change, the hand and the date are of course linked together so what you will see right now you see the date goes back you see it's now on the 14th because we have 
set the watch back an entire day from where we started from, more than 12 hours, uh, more than 24 hours. And going back now, you will see date. Yes, it's linked to your local time. That makes sense, of course, because you want to know where you are the correct, <clears throat> you want to get the correct date indication on the place where you are, of course, and at, uh, not at home. So we are back now. It's 12.25. We, have, uh, we are back on the 14th and, of course, the little subdial with the 24-hour indication separating night and day is still pointing, the red arrow is still pointing at 12. And if you want to see how to synchronize the watch, you go out in the second crown position. Now I am in the second crown position and now you will see that the entire mechanism is moving. So the subdial is turning. So to synchronize your watch, you once define where you are and you set and then by going back in the first position, you set the second indication, the local time, and then you can start traveling very easily. You see? It's rotating. Very nice. Execute. And it's, as I already told you, a fully functional dual time watch. And it's not a gimmick. It's no bullshitting. You would never get such a watch from the Swatch Group. They won't do that because this is a watch that should not be sold, but got back on the tables of those who probably fought or invented the watch and I would give, if I would be the CEO of a company and if a guy would present me a watch that is not functioning the way as I showed you, I would right away give it back to the technicians, to the engineers, um, to the watchmakers and tell them, guys, this is something you can't use for traveling because if you pull out the crown and if you lose your running second and the running minute, the watch makes no sense. So very nicely executed, the Jacques Hedro, uh, dual time world map watch. So last but not least, uh, after explaining you this really intelligent and also beautiful looking uh, watch, the prices, um, you, we are starting with the steel version with the sound blaster dial at 16,450 Swiss francs, including the Swiss tax, Swiss VAT. This version with the black onyx dial is sold for 18,050 18, Swiss francs. These are both steel watches. All the watches on the picture are unlimited, so there's no limitation on the watches. The red gold version um, with the black Grand Feu enamel dial is sold for 27,550. So is the uh, with the uh, with the the, uh, the second version with the Grand Feu enamel dial. The Grand Feu enamel dial. It's difficult to mix up French and English. The Grand Feu enamel dial, the second version with that, <coughs> uh, with in the in the red gold case, is also sold for 27,550 Swiss francs. So no limitations on these watches. It's astonishing to see what we can, or what Jacques Hedro was able to do with this uh, look of the Grand Seconde with the typical um, settings of the subdials that they perform an eight. And by using the space on the dial, it was interesting to see to integrate the second time zone plus the date. And a very nice watch, if you travel, could be a watch that is one of your uh, watches that you could choose to have on your wrist. Thanks very much for watching and uh, if you like what we're doing, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to like our videos and if you have any questions or remarks or comments to make, just here underneath use the comment section and as always, I'm more than happy to get back to you. Bye bye guys.